Unit 4 Chemistry, Chapter 12, Part 6. Now we're looking at combining techniques and this is the last part of this. Okay? So I mentioned when we talked about mass spec that we can use information from a range of different techniques and pull it all together. Okay? That gives us complementary information. So it all works together through that. Okay? You can also use types of chromatography with mass spec. Okay? So GC or HPLC that you learned about last year and we're going to look at again in our next chapter or some of that UV vis you learned about next year. We can use that to then find how they work together to find identify the molecules once we've separated them. So an example. We might start with a combustion analysis. Okay, So we know we've got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and we find by burning it that we've got those percentages by mass. We would first use that, those percentages to find the amount in mole, assuming we had 100 grams. Okay. Then we can find that ratio. So we'd have 2 to 4 to 1. So that's going to give us our empirical formula for the molecule. What we can then do is use our mass spec to find what its molar mass is. Okay. So I've got a pair of molecular, molecular iron at an M over Z of 88, so that's going to tell us it's got a molar mass of 88. Okay. Our empirical formula from before, if we add up those carbons, hydrogens and oxygens, it gives us an empirical formula mass of 44. So we do 88 divided by 44, which tells us our molecular formula is double the empirical formula, C4H8O2. Now, that could be a number of things. It could have a couple of alkanol groups. It could have a carboxylic acid group. It could have an ester group. It could have a couple of ether groups. Okay, So we've still got a range of possibilities. We need to find out the functional group next. Okay, So we look through it. We see we've got a CH. We've got a C double bond O. Okay. But we've got no OH acid and no OH alkanol. So now we know we've got an ester, okay? and ester has got two carbon hydrogen groups in it. You're not really too sure about using this CO. I wouldn't be too confident with that, but I know I've got an ester, and I know that's going to use up all the oxygens I've got. Okay? An ester with four carbons. Now I've got four possibilities. It could be methyl propanoate, ethyl ethanoate, or propyl methanoate. Now I need my NMR to tell me which one. Okay, So if I look at it, I've got three peaks in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 2. Okay, This one, 3, 2, 3, that fits the pattern. That's all good. This one, 3, 2, 3, fits the pattern. That's good. This one, 1, 2, two, three. Doesn't fit the pattern, we can knock out propyl methanoate. Down to two. Gonna look at some high res now. Okay, because I need to look at my splitting. So, this peak here, and I'm just gonna look at this one. This peak is at a chemical shift of 4.1, and it's split into a quartet. Okay, that means Looking at the chemical shift in my data book, I know that that is on this side, the right-hand side of the ester. That is the part which is attached to the extra oxygens here. We know, therefore, that anything on this side is not going to make it split, but anything on this side will. So we know that what it's attached to has to be a CH3, because N plus 1, 3 plus 1 equals 4. Yeah? So this grouping here that gives me a chemical shift at 4.1, that has to be attached to a CH3. Okay, We're talking about this group here. Okay? We're talking about this side of the ester. Yeah, In this one, methyl propanoate, we would get a peak at 4.1, but that peak of 4.1 would firstly be three hydrogens high, and secondly, it's not going to have any splitting. Whereas here, in ethyl ethanoate, it gives us the right height, two hydrogens in that peak, which is going to be at 4.1, and it's going to split into four, 
because it's attached to a CH3 group. So now I know my molecule is ethyl ethanoate. It's like doing a puzzle, but you've got to use each bit of information as it comes. Yeah, we wouldn't go straight to that and go, what is it? Because we'd be completely lost. Okay, but using all the bits of information sequentially, we can get to our answer.